Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to start um, um, a, a small set of lectures uh, related to named theorems about derivatives. Named in terms of one theorem is called Fermat theorem, another was Lagrange, another was Rolle, another was um, Cauchy. Um, I mean, there are different mathematicians who actually contributed to all these theorems. They're all very, very simple. Um, and probably like 200, 300 years ago, um, when they were actually first introduced and, and proven by, the, by these people and some other people. So um, it's quite interesting, actually. They're fundamental uh, theorems for, um, uh, for derivatives. And they're very, very useful quite frankly. Um, so, today's lecture will be about the Fermat, Fermat theorems. Fermat theorem, one theorem only. Um, now, this lecture and uh, all others are part of the course of Advanced Mathematics for high school students and teenagers. Um, the course is presented on unizor.com website. So if you're just watching it from YouTube, I do recommend you to go from uh, unizor.com because every lecture has very detailed uh, description, plus there is certain educational functionality. You, could, you can take exam, for instance, if you want to. The site is completely free. So we'll talk about Fermat theorem. Um, Fermat theorem is actually about internal local extremum of the function. So let me just explain terminology here. First of all, what does it mean internal? Well, we are talking about function which is defined on certain interval. Function uh, interval can be um, infinite as well. And um, Internal, it means that we are talking about um, the characteristics of this function inside this in interval, around certain points. These points will be called later on stationary, and I'll explain why. So, internal means it's the behavior, not an entire interval where it's defined, but locally, at certain points. Um, now, then, um, we are talking about local um, uh, behavior of the function, which means we are talking about the behavior of the function at certain points and in immediate vicinity, locality, around that point. And the third word which I was using, so internal local extremum. Now, extremum is actually one word which means minimum or maximum. Well, this is local minimum, and this is local maximum. So you see, this is where locality actually, the property of locality is, is concentrated. So what does it mean that this is a local maximum? Well, it means that in the immediate neighborhood of this point, the function is less than it, its value at that particular point. Local minimum is where the function in the immediate vicinity of this point is greater than the value of this point. So that's what basically it means. So this is about the behavior of the function. Now about the quality of the function itself. We are talking about functions which are differentiable, which in particular actually from differentiability um, follows uh, its continuousness, continuity. Um, and also, what's, what, what's also important, the uh, derivative itself should also be relatively smooth, which means at least continuous, or maybe in some cases I, will, I would require um, that the derivative is differentiable itself, so it's like a second derivative exists. So uh, all these properties of the function I would call a smoothness of the function. If the function is smooth, well, it means basically it has all the features sufficient for um, whatever the logic I will, uh, uh, I will use 
to be basically valid. So sometimes smooth means ju just differentiability. Sometimes it means that derivative not only exists, but also it's supposed to be a continuous function. In some other cases, derivative might, must be uh, differentiable itself. So it doesn't really matter right now. I don't want to be very rigorous in my definition of the smoothness of the function. But I think that the, from context, you would probably feel what it is. Now, this is a smooth function. Now, this function is not smooth. You see this angle, that's where it's not differentiable. So, we're talking about smooth functions and whatever um, um, whatever statements I will make, I will make only about these uh, smooth functions. Alright, so what is the Fermat theorem? Fermat theorem um, is the following. If the function has local extremum, this or this, then its derivative is supposed to be zero at this point. Now, you remember what derivative geometrically means, right? If you have something like this, which is line tangential to our function, then derivative basically means tangent of this angle, right? So, if the function is uh, having maximum or minimum, intuitively, it's kind of obvious that the tangential line should be horizontal, right? Here and horizontal here. So intuitively, it's obvious that the angle is supposed to be equal to zero, right? Two parallel lines, so the angle between, the, between them is zero, so tangent of this is zero, so derivative is equal to zero at this particular point and in this particular point, right? Let's consider this one. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Now, how can I prove it? So, first of all, from the intuitive standpoint, it's obvious. Geometrically, it's kind of obvious too, right? Well, let me just talk a little bit about just common sense, basically. Look, um, if this is the local minimum, for instance, it means that the function is decreasing, monotonically decreasing before, and monotonically increasing after this point, right? I'm not talking about everywhere, no, in the immediate vicinity, in the neighborhood of this point. So it may be a very small neighborhood, but it, it must be some neighborhood where the function is monotonically decreasing before this point and increasing after. And we know that monotonically decreasing point have negative in, uh, derivative. Monotonically increasing uh, functions have positive infinity, uh, positive derivative. So what happens is the derivative is negative, 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 negative here. Now I don't know what's in this particular point, but I don't. I, but I do know that after this point, it becomes positive. So something is negative, then something is positive, and if my uh, function is smooth enough, in this particular case it means derivative is a continuous function, then there should be crossing between negative and positive should be crossing zero, right? Otherwise the function derivative would not be a uh, continuous function. So that's exactly the point where we are crossing from negative to positive, which means it must be equal to zero. On the other hand, maybe a little bit more rigorous, I don't know, um, let's consider that the function is not, uh, the derivative of the function is not equal to zero at this particular point. Well, if it's not equal to zero, then it's either positive or negative, right? Now, if it's positive, it means, as we proved, uh, as we have proven before, the function should be monotonically increasing at, the, at this particular point. Well, if function is monotonically increasing at certain point, then this point cannot be local minimum because it means that before it was even smaller, right? Same thing, uh, it cannot be, so it cannot be monotonically increasing, it cannot be monotonically decreasing, which means that the uh, derivative cannot be positive 
nor negative. It must be equal to zero. So, what our assumptions uh, are in this case? Well, the function is smooth enough to make all this logic actually working. That, that's all. I don't want to go into really rigorous definition of what is exactly smooth function, but in this case, you understand what it is. Now, absolutely similar with the local maximum. So, from a um, more intuitive standpoint, we have a derivative which is changing from the positive to a negative. So, at this point, it must be equal to zero. It must cross the point zero. Or, you can um, make some other reasoning. For instance, what if it's not zero at this particular point? Then it should be either negative or positive. In which case, if it's positive, then it would be greater to the right of this function uh, of this point. So it cannot be local maximum. If it's negative, then on the left it would be greater. So in in any case, there would be no uh, local maximum. Well, basically that's it. My whole proof was very, very simple, as you see. But I wanted to introduce you to, to these concepts um, which, uh, which are very important for, for derivatives. Well, first, most important um, um, kind of result of this particular experiment with, with the Fermat's logic is that if you have local maximum or minimum, then the tangential line, this horizontal derivative is equal to to zero. What is um, another important point is a concept of a smooth function, sufficiently smooth to make the proof actually um, uh, relatively rigorous. Because we don't really want any kind of special cases like, like this, what happens if this is the local minimum when the function is not differentiable. We are not considering these cases. The cases we, which we are considering uh, are all related to smooth function and all the functions which you um, will be dealing with like polynomial functions, uh, exponential functions, logarithm functions, trigonomic, tri tri trigonometry all these functions are smooth enough actually they are uh, differentiable any number of times any higher order derivative exists for these functions Okay, so basically that's it. That's all I um, wanted to say about the Fermat's theorem. By the way, when you're saying Fermat's theorem, it's not exactly um, one particular theorem. There are many Fermat's theorems. This is one of the Fermat's theorems. Uh, it's a theorem about uh, equality of the uh, derivative to zero in, in extremum points, points of extremum. Okay, um, I do suggest you to read the um, notes for this lecture. They are basically more or less the same as whatever I'm saying right now. But if you read it again, it just um, probably uh, better understood, if you wish. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.